Straight all day. Straight all day. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves anyone out there, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy. One book and one show that is known as Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is do not be impressed by people's titles, by the titles that they give themselves, somebody's job title, or however else somebody comes about having a title. There's usually only two ways they get it. As a keynote speaker, and this is a title that alone is a title a lot of people use to impress you on you know their online profiles, and a lot of them suck, and I've seen a lot of keynote speakers, a lot of them are trash. I always like to look at how other speakers deliver to understand what makes them good and what makes them good, if anything. You know, me being a person who does some speaking gigs, anytime that I go to a, a conference where I'm not the only one speaking, I like to get there early or I will stay late just so I can see some of the other speakers or another speaker present. Because I want to see what they're talking about, what their what their game is about, how are they delivering, you know, what's their material like. Maybe there's something there that I can learn from and I can make my own game better. Maybe something they do will inspire me to step my own game up. Often, I'm going to keep it real with you, and this is not, I'm not saying this in uh, to serve myself, but I'm saying it to be completely honest and transparent. A lot of times these speakers are trash. A lot of them suck. And it's, it disappoints me, but it also surprises me. But at the same time, it doesn't surprise me as much more often than I see it because there are so many keynote speakers that I see and I wonder to myself, why the hell anyone would ever cut them a check for what they do? Why the hell would anybody ever pay them for that speech? Like somebody actually paid for that material? Like this person got, they put this material together. They practiced this material. They set it in front of their mirror, in front of their dog, in front of their husband or wife and somebody told them that this was worth money and then they actually got somebody to pay them for it? How is this even possible? Now, there are a lot of reasons why these things happen besides skill and value of material. I like to base mine on skill and value of material, but there are some people out there who do their business for other reasons and we'll get into that on a different day, on a different topic. But a lot of these, as I said, a lot of, I'm, using, I'm just using keynote speaker as an example because if you look through social media, especially somewhere like LinkedIn, and even Instagram as well. You see a lot of people who have keynote speaker in their, their bio as a description of what they do, but then I've heard them give speeches or I hear them on their own videos, their own Instagram lives or their own YouTube videos. And I'm like, this person is trash. Like they're, they are uh, touting themselves as a keynote speaker with that trash material. That's ridiculous. And they actually get somebody to pay them for this. And trust me, I've been at events where I've seen somebody who got paid probably the same amount that I got paid and they were absolute garbage. I'm like, who paid this? Who cut this check? The person who cut the check should get fired. It shouldn't even be the, the speaker who gets fired. It should be the person who cut the check because they were foolish enough to be fooled that this person has something to say. I mean, didn't you, did you do any research on this individual at all? Anyway, with all that being said, it's the same when you see people who use the word expert. They say they're an expert at a certain subject when they may not know that subject very well at all. Maybe they know it well enough that they can be an expert to a certain group of people, maybe a small pocket of people or someone who calls himself a coach, or someone who decides that they want to label themselves as an influencer. People use these titles and what they're doing is cheapening the game for people who are actually good at these things. So people who are actually good at speaking, or are real experts at a subject, or are really good at coaching, or who do have actual influence over people, their value is cheapened when other people come and grab these titles and throw them around as if they are making the titles just less valuable and more and more worthless by the day and it's just fucking the whole game up. All right, that's the point that I'm making here and I'm gonna explain why that is and I'm gonna explain why you need to be a lot more discerning when it comes to looking at people and the way that they like to describe themselves with their titles. I talked about discernment back in, let me tell you that masterclass where I talked about discernment. If I can pull it up here, masterclass number 1431. Discernment is your skill, perception, and judgment. You need to be a lot more uh, discerning when you're listening to people, especially when they try to use titles to impress you, because a lot of people are doing this these days. If you see someone trying to use a title to impress you, it's usually because they don't have any substance to impress you with, so they got to default to using the title. Just keep that in mind as we get into these points. Point number one, today's topic, once again, is do not be impressed by people's titles. 
Number one, when you see a lot of random people using a title, you see a title just getting thrown around as if it, it has no value whatsoever, trust this. The title no longer means anything. Because see, when titles mean something, you have to earn them. I'll repeat, when titles mean something, you have to earn them. When people can just throw around a title without having to earn it, there's no accountability to it, there's no uh, the certification, so to speak, for how they got that title, that title will very quickly, if not already, become useless. I've seen and heard a whole lot of, as I've said, a whole lot of trashy ass keynote speakers, I've seen a whole lot of trashy coaches, and I mostly stop applying those titles to my own work. You don't see me write keynote speaker in my bio or anywhere online about myself simply because there's so many trashy keynote speakers, I don't wanna be grouped with them. I don't want even call myself a coach in anywhere on, online, even though I do offer coaching, I do offer consulting, I do offer keynote speaking, but I don't even tout that in my bio anymore because I don't wanna be grouped with all the trashy ones that are out there. And there are too many trashy ones for me to you know, water down my title by even associating myself with them. I stop applying those titles. I don't wanna be lumped in with the bums. You must be especially wary of titles that don't have to be earned, as I already explained. So I like using the title, for example, Professional athlete is the title that I like because you have to actually earn that title. Uh, you have to actually go in and play somewhere and perform somewhere and actually be on somebody's team or compete on a certain level to have that title. And you can't fake having that title. All right, that title is worth it. Some titles like someone can officially call themselves a doctor. They can put doctor before their name. That means they have a doctorate degree in a certain area. All right, they earn that title. You can't fake having a doctorate degree. Well, I guess you could kind of fake it, but maybe somebody's gonna call you and they're gonna know what school you went to and there are probably ways that they can fact check you. I like titles like that where you have to actually earn it, you had to have actually put some work in, you had to have actually been 10 toes deep in whatever game that you're in where that title has to be earned. You gotta do something to get that title and it's in black and white and it can be proven. The titles that somebody can just grab and just throw on top of their name and cheapen the whole game and just dirty the whole game up, those titles are becoming less and less valuable simply because of what I just explained, the bums coming in the game and making it mean nothing. Point number two, today's topic is do not be impressed by people's titles. I want you to remember something. Different is always better than better. As I just told you, there are a bunch of trashy keynote speakers, a bunch of trashy coaches, experts, and influencers out there. So I don't wanna be the best keynote or the best coach or the best influencer or the best consultant out there. I don't wanna be the best of any of those things. You know what I wanna be? I wanna be different. I wanna be the only of what I do. I'd rather create a category and be the only one in that category and I own it, hopefully a category that people can understand what it is and why they would want it, because you don't wanna be a category that nobody cares about and be one-on-one -on -one that way. You wanna be a category where you're one-on-one -on -one and people actually want it. Because when you claim to be the best at something, you are hoping to sway other people's opinions. You're hoping to get other people to feel the same way. If I say I'm the best podcaster, well, that's my opinion, and I'm entitled to that opinion, but now I gotta convince a whole bunch of other people who listen to podcasts that I'm better at it than whoever they listen to or whoever they like. Or maybe they listen to me and they listen to 10 others. They might think, well, Dre, you're, good. you're up there, but you're only in the top three. I gotta try to convince people to change their opinions to agree with mine, if I say that I'm the best. Because just saying you're the best, you are also uh, noting that there must be others doing it, because otherwise you would be the only one. You would just say you're the only. If you say you're the best, that means there's somebody else doing it. Therefore, somebody else may have the opinion that they're the best. Maybe that somebody else themselves may have the opinion that they're the best. And when you call yourself the best of something, you will be, you are linking yourself to anyone else who has that title. If I say I'm the best podcaster, now you're looking at me like, okay, I guess this guy, he, well, he thinks he's the best, but he is clearly a podcaster. He just said it himself. He says he's the best podcaster. So now I'm putting myself in a box of podcaster. Now I'm in the group with every other person who calls himself a podcaster. I did that by calling myself the best of blank. Now I'm putting myself in a group with all the other blanks who claim that title as well. Maybe not the best, but they claim the title of being a blank, whatever that thing happens to be. That may not be so good for you. But when you're the only one doing what you do, you have carved out, you've carved out, carved out your own space where anybody who talks about that thing, they gotta talk about you. And when they talk about you, they're talking about that thing and there is no one else to talk about because you own that category. You're much better being the only of what you do than being the best at what you do. 
So if you're gonna give yourself a title, give yourself a title to which nobody else can say me to, nobody else can claim it, where you had to have earned it in some way, shape or form to where other people can't just say, oh, you know what, me too, I did that too. I got that destination designation as well. Something that it can only be you, you're separating yourself from the crowd and you are clearly drawing a line between you and anyone else out there who may try to, or may have tried to, when you were using the old titles that I've, I've talked about in some of them already here today, try to align themselves with what you had going on. Point number three, today's topic is do not be impressed by people's titles. Let me give you a fact of life. Many people pursue or attach professional titles to their names to cover up their personal insecurities, personal inadequacies, professional weaknesses, and distract you from their lack of actual substance. Let me say that again. Many people will pursue or just merely attach professional titles to their names to cover up their personal insecurities, their professional inadequacies, and to distract you from their lack of actual substance. See, people who don't have any real substance, the first thing they're gonna tell you about is how they are a blank. I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, I'm a consultant, I'm a this, I'm a that, without giving you any actual facts about anything that they have actually achieved, any results that they have produced, any people that they have actually helped made a difference in their lives, Anyone who actually has those things, they'll open up with that because that's much more impressive than just telling me that you're a writer or you're a blogger or you're a keynote speaker or you're a coach or you're an influencer. Who cares? There's a whole bunch of those out there and you know there are a whole bunch of them out there. So why are you using that as your title? Instead, tell me what you tell me something about you that separates you from everybody else who's going to tell me about themselves. What is it about you that's going to make me remember you? All right. It can't be that I may blank if there are a thousand other people who are also claiming that same title. Right? If you read my book, The Untold Stories from my book, Work On Your Game, I told you the story of, I read it in case y'all didn't know, there's a book called The Untold Stories from Work On Your Game. And this is just some things that happened in the process of Work On Your Game, some stories that just didn't make it into the actual book, Work On Your Game. I put them all into a different book because there were enough of them that my book, Work On Your Game, could have been twice as long. But anyway, uh, one of the editors that I was working with when I put together the book work on your game, she came in, well, not the main editor I was working with, but the boss of the editor came into one of the conversations that I was having with my editor when we had a disagreement. She came in telling me her job title as if I gave a fuck what her title was. Like, listen, bitch, your title only matters when you're in that office. All right. And I don't work there. So your title does not matter to me. Your title matters to your employees or your your subordinates. I mean, she didn't own the company. She was a, a worker there as well. Your title matters to your subordinates and the people who work for you. Your title doesn't mean a goddamn thing to me. So don't tell me about your title. That didn't matter to me. <laughs> but it was it was funny to me when she started talking and talking about her title because I could I could feel it. I could read in between the lines of the things that she was saying that she was really used to letting people know, hey, this is my this is my name and this is my job title and usually getting people to uh, conform or to fall in line or do whatever she wanted them to do just because she let them know what her title was. And I'm like, listen, I don't, I'm not in your industry. I don't give a fuck about your job title. And the only people who do are the people who work where you work. I don't work there, so your title doesn't matter anything to me. It was really, it's still in my mind whenever I think about it, it was actually kind of, it was kind of sad for them, though, these people that I'm talking about. And it was funny to me simply because I knew that that was the only thing that they had that made them feel like they were like a somebody when they were talking to me because they knew that I didn't need to respect that. But they were telling me maybe as a, an effort to see if that was gonna work. It did not work. But anyway, we got the book done. That's all that matters, right? But the only title that matters, ladies and gentlemen, is the title that separates you from everybody else out there, separates you from the competition, makes you someone who stands out from everybody else. What is it that, that is about you, about your accomplishments, about what you have created and put out into the world that other people, when they hear it, they say, damn, I've never heard that before, but I understand it. See, that's where you want to be. That's the, the sweet spot. I haven't heard anybody else use that title, but I understand it and I see the value of it. That's where you want to be. You don't want to be somewhere where, man, I've heard of a thousand other people who do that same thing. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be in a place where I never heard of it, but I have no idea what that means or what it does for anybody because now you're confusing people. You want to be in a place where people have never heard of it. it means you're a one of one, but people also understand how you can help other people. And they understand that it is not so easy for anybody else to just claim that same title because they don't have the their credentials, they don't have a the background, they don't have the credibility, they don't have a the resume, they don't have the certification, they don't have the whatever it is that you got that allows you to have that title that separates you from everybody else. 
All right, don't make yourself so different that you're irrelevant and people don't know what it means, but also don't make yourself so similar that you are just one of many out there and you get lost in the sauce at the bottom of the pyramid of life. Let's recap today's class, which is, do not be impressed by other people's titles. Now, as a speaker, as I said, I see a whole lot of speakers out there who are absolute trash, but they're getting paid as a speaker. I have no idea how, but I'm explaining to you here today that you shouldn't be impressed by people's titles because I've seen enough people out there these days and back in the day who have certain titles who are absolute garbage at what they do even in that title. So the title does not mean as much as it used to. I don't know if it ever meant anything, but I've seen it up close enough to know that titles are not something you, be, you should be impressed by by anybody. Be impressed by what somebody's actually produced, not by what they say about themselves. Point number one, when you see a lot of random people using a title, trust that that title is losing its value if it hasn't lost it all already. Now, I see in here so many trashy keynote speakers, coaches, influencers, and experts that I stopped using those titles myself simply because I don't wanna be lumped in with the bums. So be especially wary of any title that does not have to be earned. I like the title of, for example, professional athlete or the title of lawyer or the title of doctor because you have to actually do something to earn that and nobody else can just grab that and slap it on their name if they have not actually earned it. Other Those titles become cheap and useless and worthless. Point number two, remember that different is better than better. I told you before that as I see a bunch of trashy coaches and trashy keynote speakers, I don't want to be the best of them. I'd rather be different because I want to create a category of one of one. When you claim to be the best, you are hoping to sway people's opinions, which you may not always succeed in, and you are linking yourself to anyone else who has the same title. It may not be good for you. When you're the only one, you've carved out your own space. Point number three, here's a life fact. Many people pursue or attach professional titles to cover up their personal insecurities, professional insecurities, and professional inadequacies and distract you from their lack of actual tangible substance. If you read my book, Untold Stories, from my book, Work On Your Game, I told you a story of how some editor from some company tried to impress slash intimidate me by telling me her job title. Like I gave a fuck about her job title because I don't work where she works. I don't work at that company. She is not my boss. I'm not even in her industry. So I could give less than a damn about her title and I let her know that. But good thing is we did get the book done. The title only matters in some places when you're talking to other people who give a damn about that title. If you rather have some accomplishments, some tangible things that you've done that make you valuable, because people can see that you've made a difference in other people's lives in a positive way, that is much more valuable than just giving yourself a title. Do not think, ladies and gentlemen, that you can make yourself somebody these days by putting attaching a title to your name because so many people are doing it that even if you're very good at what you do, you cheapen yourself as soon as you put yourself in the same category as other people who may not be worth a damn. So be careful with your title. Work on your game. Dre all day. Yeah.